Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over step two of the accounting cycle, which is posting journal entries to the general ledger. So in step one, we went ahead and we got comfortable with journalizing all of the business transactions that were listed. Now we are going to post those journal entries from the general journal into the general ledger. So I'm going to use these two windows that I have to kind of uh, clean this up just a little bit. So it's a little bit easier for us to read side by side. Now before we jump right into it, there's just one thing I want to point out. On your general ledger, uh, you will have a ledger account for every account on that chart of accounts. And you'll notice that the account number listed is the account number that coincides with that chart of accounts. So let's see if we can resize a few things to make it easier for us. All right, now that we have our general journal and our general ledger side by side, let's go through each of these line items piece by piece so that we can post them to the general ledger. So this first one uh, on July 1st is to cash. Uh, we leave the line item blank. And the post ref is going to be the page of the journal that it's on. So let's just pretend right here that this is page one of the general journal. So we are going to put a J1 here to tell us where on the journal we could find this uh, change to cash. Um, your first debit and credit columns are going to show you exactly what you did to the, the account on the journal entry. So here on our first line item to cash, we debited cash for 15000 and since our beginning balance in cash was essentially zero, uh, now that we debit it for 15,000, our ending balance is going to be a $15,000 debit. Once you're done posting, uh, your way of saying, okay, I'm done, I did everything, is going to be to include the account number in this post ref column right here. So uh, if this is going to coincide to the page of the general journal, this is going to coincide to the account number on the general ledger. So your post ref here will be the account number. All right, next let's go ahead and post Jonathan Tinker Capital. If we scroll down to our capital account, again, it's on 1-1. One, one. Post ref is the first page of the journal. And in that one, we had credited the capital account by 15,000, and that means that our balance is now 15,000 credit. All right. Last but not least, post ref 311, and it has been posted. All right, next is going to be to the supplies account. So supplies on the 3rd of January, first page of the journal. And we debited supplies by $1,000. And that means that the balance in the account is 1000 And then we simply need to make sure that we are post refing. So let's see, 113, posted, done. Now, one rule that I will tell you is you are not supposed to fill out this column until it has been posted. If you fill out this column with the account numbers before actually posting to the general ledger, you have lied because that means that they are posted, so you must post them first. All right, let's take a look at accounts payable. All right, accounts payable on the third, we have a post ref of the first page of the journal. And we credited accounts payable by 1000 which means that we have a $1,000 balance. And last but not least, 211 is our account number, posted. All right, equipment. On the fourth, first page of the journal, we debited it for 4000 which means that we have a 4000 debit balance. And last but not least, posted. All right, here's where we finally get to do something a little bit interesting. On the fourth, we credited cash, first page of the journal, and here that cash was credited by 3,000. So here's where we get to actually see something interesting with the balance. We had a debit balance of 15,000, and we just credited it for 3,000. Remember, a credit to an asset account is going to bring down the balance. So the balance is essentially now a 12,000 debit balance. 
Um, one way that I like to kind of tell my students to remember this is that opposites subtract. So I have a debit balance and I just credited it for $3,000. i am subtracting. If I had a debit balance and I debited it, I would be adding. So let's go ahead and finish that one up and trust me, you'll see plenty more examples of that. All right, notes payable. On the fourth, first page of the journal. We credited it for 1,000, so we have a 1,000 credit balance. And 213, perfect. All right, next, prepaid rent. Again, on the fourth, feel free to, free to slow down this video if need be, but typically it's going to be kind of uh, mechanical. Here's another interesting one. A credit to cash, so we have a running balance. J1, and we credited cash for 1500 So previously, we had 12000 debit. We just credited it for 1500 so that's going to take away from the balance. So now we have a 10500 debit balance to cash. All right, another one to cash on the 9th. First page of the journal, we debited cash for 2000 which means that our balance in the account, remember if it's the same, we have a debit balance of 10,500, we just added 2,000 to it, 12,500 debit is our balance there. One, 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 there we go. Um, unearned fees, there it is. On the ninth, first page of the journal, and on the 9th, we credited that account by 2,000, 2,000 credit balance, two and five. Good, let's take a look at accounts payable. Now we have another fun, interesting one. I always like it when they build and we can update a balance. First page of the journal. On the, not the 9th, the 12th, we debited accounts payable by $600. So we had a 1,000 credit balance. We took 6,000, sorry, 600 away from that. So we're left with a 400 credit balance. So remember, opposites, subtract. And whichever one's bigger, that's the side it's going to go on. So credit of 1,000, debit of 600, that leaves us with a 400 credit. And another cash on the 12th. First page of the journal, 600. So we had a 12,500 debit balance. We just credited it for 600. So we're left with 11,900. Right. Counts receivable on the 15th. First page of the journal. On the 15th, we had debited accounts receivable for 10,000. And we're left with a 10,000 balance and post. All right, fees earned, our revenue account. Mm -mm, there it is. On the 15th, first page of the journal, we had credited fees earned for 10,000. Brilliant. 411. All right, telephone expense. Mm, telephone, there it is. All right, telephone expense on the 16th. First page of the journal. We had debited telephone expense by $200, giving us a 200 debit balance. And posted. Sorry, I don't know why I get so much joy out of doing that. <laughs> All right, on the 16th, first page of the journal, we credited cash for 200, which means that we had an 11,900 debit balance. We just credited it, decreased it by 200. So we're left with 11,700. And post. All right, another cash. First page of the journal, let's see. We debited cash by 2000 in this transaction. <clears throat> I 
we had 11,700 debit. We just added another 2,000 to that balance. So now, now we have 13,700 debit. And post. All right, next. Accounts receivable, 121. First page of the journal. We credit it for 2,000, so we are left with 8,000 debit in that account. All right, an advertising expense. Somewhere down here. There it is. Advertising expense on the 30th. First page of the journal, we debited it by $400 which gives us a $400 balance posted. Cash on the 30th, first page of the journal. We credited it by $400. So we had 13,700 debit. We just took away 400, so we're left with 13,300 debit. Get rid of that, there we go. A Jonathan Tinker drawing. Let's see, there's that Contra Capital. On the 30th, first page of the journal, we debited it by 1,000. So we have 1,000 debit balance. And cash again. Ooh. Credited cash for 1,000, that means that we have a $12,300 balance in cash and posted. All right, so that is how to post journal entries to the general ledger. It does take some practice. Um, I recommend doing this over and over and over again until it is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, if you do have a small screen that you are working on, I highly, highly recommend printing this out and looking at it side by side. That way you can kind of follow along on a piece of paper what I'm doing, because I do know that doing this side by side does make the text a little bit small. All right, so now that we're done with step two, let's go ahead and move on to step three, creating an unadjusted trial balance that will be in the next video. See you there.